Hi, welcome to Elizabeth Made This. I'm Elizabeth and I made this. Today I wanted to share my dress that I made for the Colors of the Flag Challenge. This is something that is being hosted by Renata of Running In Style and she's got some co-hosts, also Akram of Akram's Ideas, Judith of Judith T's World, and Bianca from Vintage On Tap. Um, so I made myself this dress which is kind of got this one shoulder, one shoulder thing, and I added a strap so that it would cover everything because I hate wearing strapless bras so much. Um, but this is a Franken pattern, so I took I took a ready to wear tee, and I chopped it up, and I did some stuff with it. I added I added this ruffle that goes around, and there's a casing in this, and then I took in the bottom part of the dress, which oh, let's see. Yay! Kind of pencil skirt. The bottom part of the dress is a skirt pattern that I use to cut down a pair of um, thrifted pants that I found. So they have this, it's navy, and it's got this little anchor print, which is kind of fun. So I wanted to go red, white, and blue for America because obviously I'm American. Um, and I also made my guys... Some little button-down shirts. I was really lucky. I found in my one of my latest thrifting expeditions this really great cotton shirting. It's got it's a combed cotton. It's just a beautiful quality. I had enough that I could make their little button downs. So these two are the raglan ones that I used from a recent pattern. Um, actually, I did a pattern review a couple posts back on my blog about this particular one. And then I have just a regular button down for my youngest son. If I can find the sleeve. I actually I could I could pattern match for the most part on these two. I couldn't I couldn't do that on the on the facings. The facings just ended up being kind of whatever I had left over because there was I was kind of I was I was short on my on my pat on my fabric for some of it, but it worked out really well for most of it for my pattern matching. But I am going to talk more about this particular dress and how I put it together um, really quick before we go down to the sewing room and I show you how I, how I hacked my pattern. This was my practice. So this, these colors, these colors are way more my my typical everyday wear. I love I love soft colors. Um, they just they they match my coloring really well, and I love wearing them. It's spring all the time around here. I say. Uh, but first, I started with this skirt. So this is a Berta style pattern, and I like the fit of it, and it has these cool little pleats on the pockets and the pockets kind of come in at an angle so it's kind of a it's a really it's a nice pocket and I've always really really liked wearing this skirt so I took this and I added it to this top this top is a asymmetrical tee it's another Berta style pattern um, except I took the neckline edge of this where it kind of swoops down and I carried that around to the back side and got rid of this different kind of one shoulder situation and I will show that better on the pattern when we go downstairs to the sewing room. The first thing that I did though was I put this top on and this skirt on and I tucked it in really well and I marked where the waist was hitting me with pins all the way around my waist on, on the tee and that gave me a good start to where I could start doing my pattern hack and I will explain that later. I'll explain that downstairs. Alright, let's go to the sewing room. So this episode of Pattern Hacker, I'm putting together the Berta Style 2 2013 109 asymmetrical top with Berta Style 5 2010 130, uh, which is kind of a pencil skirt and it has these little 
cleats in the pocket and there's a front fly which we're going to get rid of um, and then on the asymmetrical top we're just cutting this off the waist and we're just going to put this guy plus that guy to get our to get the dress and so this is kind of a really specific franken pattern it's um, I just want to take you through my process of how I created this happy birthday America yay it's Elizabeth need this and this is a 4th of July edition of pattern hacker so I'm going to show you how I made this dress which I already showed you in my intro but you can see it's got it's got a ruffle around the neck and a nice strap that covers everything and then I've got an invisible side zipper that goes down into the skirt the, so the top part is from a, from a t-shirt and the bottom part of the skirt is a stretch woven fabric that I got from a, a, a pair of pants that I found in the thrift store that have this navy navy with a white anchor print so it's it's rather nautical but I'm going to show you how I put it together so I'm starting with bird style 2 2013 109 which is an asymmetric top which is the one I showed you in the intro so first I'm going to grab the back pattern piece and I'm going to grab my favorite t-shirt pattern and it's back and I'm going to match the arm side with the arm side of the, the asymmetric top. And then I'm going to get the center back pretty close to it. The bird's side top is just a little bit wider so I'm, I'm, still, I'm still even but not, not exactly on the center back line. And you can see that, that my, my jolly pattern is a little bit not as wide as where I ended up cutting it. Go ahead and trace that arm side onto the pattern, but then you want to you go back and check it with the front pattern piece. And you can see if I mash up, if I mash up that shoulder seam with the front, it's a little bit wider than where the, where the, jolly, stop, the jolly pattern stopped. So, to do that, I just kind of, you want to mark where the end of that shoulder is coming, and then go back to your, go back to the arm side for it, the, the jolly top, and you mash up those shoulder seams, and then just pivot this out so that you can trace that top part of the arm side so it hits. It hits where the rest of this is coming. So that is where I want the shoulder to come so that so that I still have that, that one shoulder situation, but it's it's gonna come and the next part we're gonna do you grab your front pattern piece, mash up your shoulders. And you want to trace that, that the neck edge from the front pattern piece to the back so that it hits, it hits that bottom of the arm side right there. And that's going to be your, your neckline for the back of this particular top. And then the next part you want to do is go down and add where your waistline is. So when I tried it, when I tried on when I tried on the top and put the skirt over over it, I marked that part with pins, and then and then I put my pattern on top of it and figured out where where that was, and then just drew a line on my pattern. So when I go to cut when I go to cut this out of my fabric, I'm gonna add I'm gonna add an inch below this line. That'll give me some space for. In, for seam allowance and for any mess ups that I make in the the fitting process as it were. Okay, so that takes care of the back pattern piece. We don't have to do anything else to the to the front pattern piece. The front pattern piece, you just add that line, that seam line for the waist, and then you can cut out, you can cut out your tops. 
Now it's optional, but you can also add you can also add a strap to to this top part of the dress. So I took I took a strip of fabric and I cut it four inches by just a random amount, and I determined the final amount by just trying it on and it's going to be different for everybody's body exactly how long it is for me i wanted it to be a little bit about 12 inches total and then i just i stitched it down on the inside of the neckline after after i bound the edge of it okay and the only other part that you have to cut for the front the front of this is the ruffle so you want you want to measure the circumference of the back neckline plus the front neckline minus the seam allowances, and then you want to cut a ruffle that's two times that length, and then and then you run a gathering stitch and gather it all the way around and base it into place on the the raw edge of the neckline. So you've got two ways that you can finish that. On this, on my practice one, I did it with foldover elastic. Um, the nice thing about foldover elastic is it's really soft and comfortable to wear, but I, it's pretty bulky once you add the once you add the gathering. Um, and I also finished the finished the arms the armholes with with the foldover. If this didn't have the ruffle on it, I think the the foldover would be a great way to finish to finish this. Um, the other way that you can finish the top is what I did on my patriotic version, which is with a with a with a casing on the inside. So I took a I took a strip of fabric that I sewed to after so after after I basted the ruffle into place, I took I, I took a strip of fabric, uh, I want to say it was one inches wide, maybe a little bit wider than that, and I, I, I sewed it I put the the right side of the of the casing to the right side of the ruffle, and then I sew I sewed around all of that, and then I flipped the casing to the inside, and I and I stitched down the bottom of that all the way around, and then I I did leave a tiny hole, which is where I had my um, invisible zipper. So I'm. No, not where I have my invisible zipper. Sorry, I left a I left a hole. I, I left a tiny hole that I closed up later, that I could thread clear elastic through. The great thing about the clear elastic is that it stays. It's really really secure as you're wearing it, and I just kind of pulled on the elastic until it was comfortable to wear, um, and it's really it's very very secure. It's not going to fall down at at all. And I also added elastic. I didn't mention this about the straps. I added elastic through the strap, so this is kind of a wide elastic. Um, you don't have to put the elastic in it. I put it in there just so that it would be really secure while I was wearing it, so it wouldn't bag out during the day and kind of just droop down or fall off my shoulder or something. I just wanted it to be really secure. Okay, so with the, with the, the skirt part of this, you're going to cut everything exactly like you would for the for the skirt that you're wearing. The only thing that's going to change is the construction a little bit. So on this particular pattern there was there was a there's a fly front, so I eliminated that and I opted for the side invisible zipper. So that doesn't really doesn't change anything in the pattern because you already have that seam allowance and this the invisible zipper just goes in the seam allowance. Ta da! Uh, the only thing that changes is what you do with the waist. So instead of, instead of having a facing that folds to the inside of this, the top part, the knit, the knit t-shirt part is sandwiched in between the waist, the waist. So on the inside of this, it's a nice clean casing. And that's it. That's this top enjoy all of the pictures of it and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe you can watch all of my stuff anytime on instagram at elizabeth made this or check me out on my website at elizabethmadethis.com happy sewing